we're here today because we uh, we got some really good data to show and talk about a few things that uh, folks on online have been asking. Um, so uh, really quick, we've we've got some uh, data to to kind of take a look at the difference between lidar and SR measure. Um, so I think uh, you you probably have some lidar stuff pulled up here on the screen. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, how LIDAR performed when trying to measure this pile? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so just to set some context, so the LIDAR we're talking about here is, you know, Apple's iPhone LIDAR. So on the latest iPhones, iPhone Pros, there's a little dot right at the bottom below the cameras, and that's a LIDAR sensor. And so what it's doing is it's setting out, you know, infrared light and measuring the amount of time it takes that light to come back. And you generate then, you know, depth readings similar to what a LIDAR, you know, a LIDAR scanner would do. You know, instead of a single beam, this is sending out a ton of them all at once and, and reading those depths. So if you try to use Apple's iPhone LIDAR to go out and, and measure a pile, uh, one of the first challenges you run into is just its limited range. So according to the spec sheet, uh, that LIDAR has a range of around five meters, you know, so 15 to 16 feet. Uh, and on our own tests, you know, it, it, it works pretty well within that range. So when you're indoors, when you're outdoors, you can get that, that five meter range, that 15 or 16 feet. But, you know, in this uh, example here that I'm showing um, in this video, you know, when you're walking around a stockpile, that 15 or 16 feet is just so limited. You know, you can only really see, you know, the ground uh, at the base of the pile. You can't, the, the, the LIDAR isn't even touching the surface of that pile. And that's the biggest problem you run into is just that you can't actually, you know, scan the pile surface. And so if you were to try to say, well, hey, well, what if I, you know, what, what does this look like in 3D? What does a, a stockpile measurement from, from LIDAR look like? Uh, what does that look like? I can bring it up here. And so this is the 3D point cloud, you know, from, from that LIDAR data. And if I, I zoom into that and look at it from different angles, you can see, I mean, it's the, the, the biggest thing is, there's no pile it's just the ground you know and so it's it's just perfectly flat um you know and there's and sure there's a ton of points in there um a little bit of noise you know but there's there's no pile and so when you try to you know use the lidar sensor to do some sort of measurement outdoors as soon as you get to something that's you know real world conditions where you're not you know this tiny object right in front of you um it's just you, you run out of range well, you know, one thing I notice on this is is we're pretty far from the pile. Um, what happens if you get closer to the pile? Is there any any concerns on lidar when you're close up? Yeah, and so you could say, hey, in this case, yeah. What if what if instead of walking so far, what if you just stood closer? And that may work for like a really really small pile. That might be possible. You might be able to capture a little bit of the ground, a little bit of that pile surface, you know, and, and get the whole way around. But as soon as you start working with, you know, real world piles, you know, where that pile height is 10, 20, you know, feet tall, um, you're going to have challenges. And again, remember that even if your pile is 10 feet tall and you may think, well, hey, the LIDAR can scan 15 feet. I should be able to see that. Well, that pile is sloping away from you. And so you have to be able to see both, you know, at the distance to that pile peak as well as its height, which then can really easily go beyond that 15 foot range. And then you can't measure your pile. Now, sure, if, if you're really... Uh, adventurous and want to walk up and down that entire entire pile surface, uh, you could try to scan everything in, but that's dangerous. That's time consuming. Uh, that's gonna be really hard to pull off walking all over that pile just to scan it with with your iPhone. And so in this case, yeah, lidar just it's not sufficient. So with this, we've got the same walking path and distance uh, from SR measure. Why don't you show us uh, how that turned out? Yeah. So. SR measure, um, if I turn this off and switch to the point cloud from SR measure, what you get is a much more complete reconstruction of that pile. So here again, I'm showing this point cloud uh, reconstruction from what, you know, what SR measure used behind the scenes. You know, when you zoom in, it's a really dense point cloud. Uh, there's a lot of detail there. Um, and so this is obviously this is not LIDAR. SR measure does not use LIDAR at all. It uses what's called photogrammetry. And so photogrammetry is a technique where uh, instead of using, you know, the, this active sensor that this LIDAR, which is sending an infrared light, uh, photogrammetry uses just 
what our you know our human eyes use you know visible light and so photogrammetry looks at a you know this this video image it sees the ground it sees the pile it sees the trees in the background it even sees the clouds up in the sky and so it analyzes those pixels to figure out well hey i saw you know that 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 rock you know in a previous frame you know and i and then it attracts it from frame to frame and watches you know, that that pile, watch that ground moves, watch the pile move, you know, and based on that motion, you know, using, you know, geometry and trigonometry, it's able to triangulate those points in space and saying, hey, I've seen the same point on that pile from multiple directions, you know, where is, where does that point converge to uh, in 3D space? And so it's, it's grounded in reality. Photogrammetry is, you know, using science and math to uh, figure out the 3D shape of things, the 3D geometry of things based on imagery. And so that's what allows SR measure to deliver these, these amazing results. So we've got some limitations to the iPhone LiDAR, which is really, it sounds like distance is one of the big ones on here when trying to measure a pile. And I can see that, that this is a small pile compared to most, most on the site. Um, what are what are some of the uh, what are some of the things that photogrammetry struggles with, or some things that you may want to watch out for while while measuring with SR measure? Yeah, yeah. So SR measure uh, and and photogrammetry because it's reliant on the imagery to do that that measurement. You know, the, the imagery has got to be good. Um, you know, and so for instance, if you uh, are trying to measure in the middle of the night, you know, uh, if you go out and there's no light outside, the sun's not shining, um, and you can't see the pile, well, the camera can't see it either. And so, you know, SR measure won't be able to reconstruct that pile. So it, it assumes that the pile's visible, you know, it wants that nice, uh, clear video imagery. Um, again, you know, too, um, it, it, it wants, you know, minimal blur, like you can walk pretty fast. There's been an example where people have run around stockpiles and we've still got great data. Um, but, you know, there again, if you're really shaking your phone and if you're causing blur, that's going to be a problem. So you want to keep your phone steady. You can move fast around that pile, capture that imagery. Um, there's times if, you know, if, if your pile is surrounded by water, so you just had a huge, heavy rain and there's standing water around the pile, you know, th that water can cause reflections or sometimes the water doesn't reconstruct well. Like you can even see, you know, on the side of this pile, there were some puddles. And so that didn't reconstruct uh, well in, in that in that stockpile, in that example. Um, other challenges are like vegetation. If your pile's covered in weeds, you're having to like weave in and out between trees. That's not going to work well because one, it's, gonna be, it's hard to walk. But then two, you don't want those trees and the vegetation as being a part of your measurement. And, you know, you, you want to be able to see that pile surface. See where's the ground, where's the pile surface, where's that, that toe around the pile, that transition. Um, and so photogrammetry, you know, it needs imagery of the pile. And so as long as you capture that and get nice, um, sort of steady imagery of, you know, as you go around the pile, you get a great result. So it sounds like what you see is what you get really. That's right. That's awesome. Well, uh, um, in, in this pile, we, we certainly have a few spots on the top that we can't see. Uh, why don't you tell us how SR measure handles those spots? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good observation there. So, you know, we already mentioned how LIDAR can't see the top of the pile because it's limited range. Here, photogrammetry couldn't see part of the top of the pile just due to the way the pile was shaped. So because this pile had some ridges, you know, some natural ridge lines and some peaks, you know, that there were parts of the pile that just weren't seen. You know, that, you know I, I wasn't, you know, the person recording this video wasn't holding the phone 20 feet in the air. You know, they're holding it at, you know, ground level as you walk around the pile. And so there's going to be parts of that top surface of the pile that just aren't visible at all in any uh, of that video frames and any of that imagery. So what SR measure is going to do is it's going to, you know, use um, the shape of the pile. So it's going to look and say, well, hey, you know, this top part of the pile wasn't visible from any different views. So it's going to look at the slope and the shape of the surrounding areas and then do sort of an intelligent interpolation. So it's going to fill in the gaps um, in, in that part of the measurement. And so, you know, it's not going to, you know, completely remove it, you know, and so you'll still account for the volume there. Uh, and the measurement, it's going to be really accurate too, because, you know, the, this, the shape here, this pile, it's not doing anything weird. And again, the algorithms sort of understand the natural shape and slope of piles. And so when there's a gap like that, it can make a, an intelligent estimation, you know, of what that surface would have looked like in that area. 
Um, and then you'll see this then in the report as well. So after you finish that measurement and then you get that final 3D model which has the contours on it, you may see some uh, dashed red lines or, or red circle on parts of the pile. And that's just highlighting the top of the pile that wasn't seen uh, in that video. But again, because you know it's it's the SR measure, it's when it's doing that volume calculation, it's it's analyzing that that shape, that slope of the pile, and so it does a really nice interpolation and fills in those gaps. Yeah, I always like to see that that visual representation of what you know where where it didn't get good visibility, uh, you know, and it helps it helps me in the field while I'm out measuring my piles. It really helps identify what we can do better. Uh, you know, from from measurement standpoint, there's always some controllables that we can have to make it a little bit better. You know, there's it's never going to be a hundred percent perfect unless you got this nice perfect cone, and you know that's very rare to have on site, especially if we have you know production going and things moving. So, um, sweet. Well, uh, can you tell me a little bit about how? how uh you know in this photo i'm i'm seeing kind of a gray pile and some gray road how does the system know where the road is compared to the pile oh yeah you know that, that's a good question so yeah when you, when you look at this pile yeah like you said like the the color of the ground the color of the road ends up being pretty similar to the color of the pile and so how does sr measure know where does the pile begin and end you know what, what are the boundaries of the pile and, and what's ground around it well, behind the scenes, SR Measure is using you know, patented technology, patented algorithms that can do this automatic identification. And so what those algorithms are doing is, yes, to a human, I might think that a color uh, is useful, but these algorithms are looking at the geometry, the shape, the curvature, the inflection points you know, of that point cloud. You know, and so when I zoom in on that point cloud, yes, I've got, in this case, you know, millions of points in this point cloud. And so SR measure is, is looking at each of those points and then reasoning about, you know, well, which parts of that are flat, which parts are sloped, you know, and then even the parts that are flat, you can't just assume that everything that's flat is ground because maybe there was a building nearby. Maybe there's a trailer parked, you know, near this pile, you know, and that, that you know, sides of that trailer or the top of the trailer or a vehicle, you know, might have been flat. Um, and so the algorithms are automatically able to figure out, well, where, where is that ground? What parts, what flat surfaces of this pile were actually the ground and what parts are pile? Um, and, it, and it's more than just fitting a flat plane. So a lot of times you, know, you may look at other software packages or other measure, pile measurement techniques, you know, and it just assumes that there is a perfectly flat or, you know, a flat but tilted ground surface under your pile. SR measure does better than that. And it's actually able to fit sort of a curved or warped ground surface. So if your pile's up against, you know, on some rolling you know, terrain or up against sort of a, a slight embankment, um, you know, SR measure is able to accommodate for that, you know, and compensate for that and figure out that, oh, okay, on one half of the pile, you know, your ground's down here. And then as you move to the other half, the ground slopes up slightly and maybe levels off again. And so these algorithms are able to find that ground the whole way around the pile and give you a really nice fit. That's really interesting. You know, uh, with with a lot of uh, LIDARs and programs that, that are used in the, uh, in the industry, right now there's kind of a human element to it where somebody gets to choose where the ground is you know they may look at it and say okay well based on what i see here this is where the ground is uh you know it sounds like what you're telling me is that that si the system kind of knows where the ground is and it uses the same reasoning every single time so the consistency is there yeah, it's yeah, it's consistent because it's these algorithms, and it it has so much more data than what a human like a human like you said. Oh, if a human's just clicking, he might click on five points, ten points, twenty points around the pile, and be like, "Oh, this is the ground." But SMS, it has millions of points or hundreds of thousands of points to choose from, and so it's analyzing all of those to figure out, you know, where truly is that ground, you know, and then there's these algorithms to figure out, well, is that just, you know, a bump? Is that truly the ground? Is that noise? Is that a a, a log that's, you know, beside the pile or a vehicle? So yeah, it's it's consistently uh, determining, you know, that that ground pile separation and gives you that nice consistent result. I think you might have some 
extra juice to show us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So bonus round. So going back yeah. to LIDAR. So, um, you know, all this talk about, you know, photogrammetry and, and, and 3D reconstruction with these point clouds, this kind of all falls in the bucket of computer vision. Uh, and so one of the, um, you know, hottest uh, topics right now in computer vision is machine learning and artificial intelligence. So one of the things that Apple makes available uh, to developers, you know, in their iPhone is machine learning based depth estimation. And so what that allows me as a developer to do is ask my phone, hey phone, you know, what is the depth? What is the distance for every single object uh, in this image? And so if I bring up uh, a video that shows that, you get something like this. And so what this is saying is for every single pixel, uh, it's trying to figure out how far away it is. And so these red colors are near, this you know, dark blue is far, and then the yellow and greens um, you know, are in between. And so just watching this video, it's like, well, this looks amazing. You know, the ground is close, my foreground pile is next, there's this background pile which is a little farther, and then the sky and trees are even you know, farther beyond that. And so this looks amazing. The problem with this is this is it's it's artificial intelligence. It's hallucinating all of this. It doesn't actually know how far away all these things are. It's trying to create something that looks reasonable. And so if, if we take these this data, we take these depth measurements and convert that into 3D values and visualize those values, what you end up with is this just oops, kind of wrong. This just mess of points. So this is that same wow. stockpile now visualized using those machine learning based depths. And so while frame by frame, those depths may have looked reasonable, like the colors looked pretty, you know, it looked nice. But when you try to interpret that as actual measurements, you just get randomness or not randomness, but you get all this noise. And, and the problem is because that, that, that machine learning data, it's not consistent. So in one frame, it may have thought that the pile was 30 feet away, but in the next frame, it thinks it's 50 feet away. And the frame after that, it thinks it's 40 feet. And the frame after that, it thinks it's 60 feet. And so you have all these conflicting measurements or conflicting estimates for what it thinks the depth of the pile is, and that you just end up with this, you know, chaotic noise, which, you know, could be some abstract art or, you know, could be some alien planet. Um, yeah. And so that's where, you know, the, the machine learning depths, while pretty, it's 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 not grounded in reality. It just it looks pretty, and that's it. You know, if you try to fall back on just the pure lidar, as we saw there, it doesn't go far enough. It has that limited range, and so that's the power of SR measure. It's grounded in reality. It's grounded in photogrammetry, which is science and math. You know, again, it's it's the math of saying I have this. I can see the same point from two different perspectives, and then triangulating that point in space. I now know where that is. And that's what gives these precise, accurate, repeatable measurements. And it's, yeah, it's the power of SR measure. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, one more question. What's your favorite topping on a pizza? <laughs> oh, favorite topping. Oh, man. I love, I mean, sausage, garlic. Put a little uh, arugula on the end there, too. Love it. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks so much. And. Hopefully we can have you back to share some more uh, insight on SR measure. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dustin.